In this week's Boss Lady, we hear from five successful entrepreneurs who share their struggles and inspiration for success. They discuss their turning point when they knew they were on the right path. You have all created businesses from out of the box thinking. What made you veer left when everybody else was going right? Bobby. When I moved to New York, it was the 80s and everyone was doing the, you know, over made up contour look. I know it's back. I still don't like contour. <laughs> So I would make up the models to make them look like they weren't wearing makeup, and that was my calling card. But there was no makeup available that allowed you to do that. I met a chemist one day at a shoot, and I said, I can't find a lipstick that didn't smell, wasn't greasy, and I wanted to match lips. Then I realized, wow, this is something. For me, entrepreneurship, it wasn't something that I aspired to. I always wanted to be an inventor. If I can be the perfect balance between Beyonce and Bill Nye the Science Guy every single day. <laughs> now we're installing our technologies around uh, different countries uh, in emerging markets, turning everything from floors and roads to baby strollers into uh, energy generating solutions. You guys both touched on this idea of identifying problems that existed in your life and looking at ways that you could shape an industry rather than looking at the industry itself. I started a fashion technology company with my co-founder. We had no fashion or technology experience. We knew what it meant to buy a dress for $1,000, wear it once, and then be photographed on social media and feel like you could never wear it again. Right. So we're like, well, that doesn't make sense. Renting dresses made sense. If you thought too far down the road, it could be easy to find all the why nots versus the how can you make this happen. I want to hear Angela's story talking about how you are helping young entrepreneurs. So I started New Me, which is an, is an accelerator for minorities in 2011. We focus only on the technology industry, which at the time, it was young, technical, white guys club. I did not really start New Me as a business. It was a problem that I wanted to solve, and I thought it was going to be like a one-time project. What do you see is standing in between these women and the dollars that you know they need to succeed. When I work with men, they are not scared to ask for money, even if what they are working on is mediocre. But women can have something phenomenal, but it's like we hold ourselves back. So a lot of the work that I do, in particular with women, is confidence building, is getting them comfortable with asking for the money. Priya, I want to talk about the impact you are having on actual people, helping them create wealth in a way that they've never even thought of before. Historically, uh, financial planning has been reserved for the wealthy. And when I was working on Wall Street, my clients were old and rich. And all of my friends at the same time were wondering, where do we go for the answers? There is this completely underserved, kind of ignored demographic um, that we call Henry's, high earners, not rich yet. I so often hear young women say, I just want to be paid what I'm worth, but I don't even know what that means. And I very rarely hear young women say, I want to make a lot of money, right? It's as if we all sort of internalize this idea that the budget's not there. Research show that men are four times more likely than women to ask. So it's stash wealth, salary negotiations come up. Set it as a goal though, and it has to be a very concrete goal. Like I want to buy a $250,000 house in three years. So I want to get a raise and like let's back into what you need to do today to be on track. The flip side that millennials have to be very careful of is, is entitlement. For example, one kid said, I feel like I really need to make X. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. For this job, if you do all of this research, this is the highest you can get paid. And he's like, yeah, I didn't really think about what the job was. I just kind of thought, you know, New York. What are you saying? <laughs> I don't think women talk about comp and salaries in the same way men do. Women I advise, some of the most valuable help I give them is actually talking in a real way about yes. what should you be making. But like getting the data out there, that's hard, especially amongst women because there are fewer women who are in leadership roles. I find younger women are much more transparent with their salary. And for them, it's not TMI, it's cocktail talk. And I think that that lifting the veil is gonna get us all closer really to equality. In The Big Life, I have an entire chapter devoted to the side hustle secret to success. How do you know when it's time to make your side hustle your main hustle? I fully believe in the side hustle. And in fact, when I worked in finance, because I was not passionate about finance, I would spend 
whatever time I had doing college essay editing, which I kind of made a little business around, but ultimately went to business school and co-founded Rent the Runway in business school. So I was kind of side hustling it. I was taking classes, but I'm a pretty risk averse entrepreneur. So the whole way I had a timeline of milestones that we had to meet. And I think it was helpful for me and my co-founder. It kept us honest. Ultimately, one of those milestones was raising money. And for me, raising money was another way of checking myself on, was this a good concept that VCs would put their name behind. So I very much believe like that parallel processing and kind of always having a little bit of a safety net. Um, and then just being honest with yourself if something's not working. If you know a boss lady you think should be featured on our show, we want to hear from you. Drop me a line at Andrea at dailyflashshow.com. We would love to hear from you and share a new bossy story with all of our viewers. And if you want to check out all of our previous boss lady segments, all you have to do is head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. Once you're there, just look for the Boss Lady tab, click on it, and it will take you to all the previous Boss Ladies we featured on the show. Again, the website is dailyflashshow.com. We're back right after this.